In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, amen. I remember when I was in school, when it would be time that after we took an ex exam, and it would be time where the teacher would pass out the exam, there would be like in me such nervousness because I always tried to work hard and I always wanted to do the best that I could. But when that anticipation comes, when you're seeing the teacher start passing out the exam and you look at the other children in the class and you see their faces and you think, oh, I wonder what he got or I wonder what she got. And then finally the exam returns to you and you see the grade for the first time. Even till now, I get just nervous even thinking about it because sometimes when we work so hard or we want to achieve something so much, it's that judgment time that's the scariest. It's the most nerve-wracking. It's what fills our hearts with the most anticipation. So throughout time, the idea of our final judgment has been used against us sometimes in a terrifying way where if we're not good, the judgment is going to be very bad. And other times we've heard that no matter what we do, that the Lord is long-suffering and caring and loving, and so the judgment isn't going to be nearly as scary as we anticipate. So we're always in this weird thing. It's like when we were in college sometimes where we had a choice of our professors, we would look for the professor that was the easiest, and then we would anticipate that if we took this easy professor, we would get better grades. But sometimes we were mistaken, and that easy professor wasn't so easy. Or we would be stuck with what was considered a very hard professor, and we would find that that class was very hard. But sometimes we would find that the class actually is easier than we thought. What was scary about that choice was we didn't know what would happen. Our judgment will be different because the Lord explained it to us on multiple occasions. This is a grand scene that He sets up where the angels will be standing around the Lord and the Lord will sit on His throne and He will separate us. The way that, the, that Christ puts it in the Gospel of St. Matthew is that He will separate it as if He's separating the lambs or the sheep from the goats. If you've ever been in like a petting zoo or something or at a farm, you see lambs and you see goats. The person that understands the difference can very easily tell the difference between a lamb and a goat. Someone that has seen them for the first time will say, I don't know which is which. But if you know it even a little bit, if you've just been explained one time, you'll know the difference between a lamb and a goat. The difference isn't so tricky. It's not so hard. It's not so to the point where someone has to really think about it. We, as the sheep of our Lord, are seen and known by Him. He knows us. He knows us because it says even in the Gospel, from the beginning of time, He had separated us already. So we have this hope in the Lord that He's done what needs to be done for us to be on His right side. At the same time, we have also a responsibility to be worthy of that calling. So it's not so much that just because we know that He will put us on the right side that we just go through life thinking that we don't need to do anything else. We must work and we must not prove our faith, but to work in faith, to work within the spirit that we have inside of us the Holy Spirit that lives in us and guides us to the good things that we need to do. Our lives then become a great journey from one day to the next where we try to learn from our mistakes and we try to get better from the problems that befall us. Today, the church commemorates Archangel Gabriel because today was the date of a consecration of his church in Alex near Alexandria as we read. And the main uh, like story of Arch I'm sorry, Archangel Raphael, the main story of Archangel Raphael 
is in the book of Tobit. If you read your regular Bibles that most of us have, we don't have the, the uh, book of Tobit in it. But since we all have Coptic reader now, most of us, the book of Tobit is in there. So if we, you haven't read it, it's a good idea to read it. The book of Tobit is full of this idea, this idea that um, sometimes we do good and we pray. And even after that, hardships befall us. And then we pray about these hardships that befell us. And we ask the Lord to help us. And in this, in this book in particular, the Lord sends Archangel Raphael to be with Tobit's son. His name is Tobias. And Tobias had to go on a journey to pick up some money from someone else to help his father. And in that journey, he met his wife. And in that journey, his father, who had been blinded um, when he came back, was healed through the suggestions of the man that was with Tobias, which turned out later to be Archangel Raphael. Sorry, I'm giving the story away, but when you read it, it will be a nice thing. Um, and in the end, they try to give Archangel Raphael a gift because of what he did and how much he helped. So Tobias and his father go and they say, we have this large um, fortune now, we want to give you half. And so Archangel Raphael says, I don't need any of this. I was commanded by God to come. And only through your prayers, God saw your actions and God saw your deeds. You'll see in the beginning of the, the book of Tobit that Tobit does something very good for the people. I'll let you read it and find what it was. And God remembered the good works of Tobit. Even though Tobit befell some calamities after that, he still held faith and strength in God. And so his life was not just suffering or was not just happiness, but everything, just like we experience all of the multitude of the emotions. But in the end, when we look up to, to God in heaven and we ask Him to help us, He does, and He is with us. And He encourages us, and He sends His angels to protect us, and He sends His saints so that they can pray on our behalf. So, our life then isn't just standard or stable in one thing, but always moving and always different. If we therefore glorify God in the good and the bad, we cling to God during the good times and the bad times, we try to do the most or the best things that we can in all of our lives, then when that day of judgment comes, there's not going to be that nervous energy anymore because you know that you're a sheep. You're not a goat. And you know that the Lord knows you and sees you. And so the time of your judgment will be a fantastic, jovial, happy event where you'll know you will be chosen because you acted like a sheep, a sheep of Christ, a good Christian, a good uh, example of the Lord, someone that let the Holy Spirit do the things that the Holy Spirit can do. May the Lord all give us this patience in our life that when sometimes when things don't go so well, we lose this uh, activity of the Holy Spirit. And we always continue with trying to do the right thing, uh, to show our Christianity, to show the Spirit that dwells within us in everything that we do. And glory be to God forever.